So before we start talking about the subject of today's video, I want to put up a disclaimer now, and I probably will repeat this multiple times throughout the course of this video, and that is that your health, wellness, fitness, and nutrition journey is your responsibility. You need to be accountable to yourself. The point of this video is to really hopefully reinforce to those people out there that you can't cure everything with a pill, with a knife, nor in this case with an injection. And people are going to take the shortcuts. That is their choice. I want your choice out there to be the slow choice, to be the consistent choice. As my buddy Mike Barnes always says, boring consistency produces amazing results. Unfortunately, the people who are going to show the posts, replies, comments here in this video do not believe that. So let's get started right away. And yes, we're talking about Ozempic. So, and this is just another wave in the, the health and fitness craze, the weight loss craze. Back in my day, it used to be Ephedra, Dexatrim, all these different drugs that people would take for rapid weight loss in order to look uh, very lean on TV in the wrestling sense, or just taking it for their own personal ego, vanity, whatever it might be. But I'm coming to you with this video as a 52-year-old natural man that struggles with the same stuff as you age, struggles with the same weight loss journey, muscle building, all these different things. So I am empathetic to people that have trouble with this. But once again, we have to point out the gaslighting, the hypocrisy, the people that are just flat out lying to themselves and lying to you out there. So before we get into that, I want to go to the official Ozempic website, possible side, of, side effects of Ozempic, and the, it's an injection, common side effects, nausea, diarrhea, stomach, abdominal pain, vomiting, constipation. So diarrhea and constipation and nausea, vomit. I mean, this is like the, the gambit, the spectrum, the gauntlet of common side effects. So here we have, if you experience nausea, here are some general nausea tips you might find helpful. And as you go down here, it has all this different safety information. Do not, do not use Ozempic if right here you have all these other stuff right here. But I also want to point out once again, these celebrities that were really touting and becoming unofficial ambassadors of Ozempic, now they're putting out even in U.S. Magazine and all these other ones, these people that are having issues with Ozempic side effects. Some people even threw up in front of people out of nowhere, and they're now talking about this. Now, they say Kelly Osborne has taken Ozempic, and she has said she hasn't, even though there seems to be evidence that she has taken Ozempic. So very weird stuff, weird gaslighting. And I'm looking at these people. Most of them don't look like they, they stuck to a workout and hit a sticking point, also known as a plateau in their training, in their diet, any of this stuff. So uh, that's what I would say. A lot of people I know tend to do, say, steroids, growth hormone, PEDs, this and that and the other thing, when they hit a plateau. They train hard, they diet hard, they try to get proper rest and recovery, and then, and only then, in their mind, it's time to try to get some assistance. But once again, when you come off the drugs, what happens to your body your metabolism, the chemistry in your body. These are the real questions that have been answered in many different cases, but we're going to stay objective in this way. So with that being said, let's go to the first comment right here. And you can see by their screen name, okay, they're replying to another person here. And this person says, Ozempic is not meant to be a rescue medication for diabetics. Why do you feel obesity is less worthy of a diagnosis for this medication if obesity causes cardiovascular issues, sleep apnea, increased risk for infection, infertility, and diabetes. Is diabetes prevention just not worthy enough in your eyes? Get real right now. See what happens there. People, it's called gaslighting. Uh, I forget, we called it something else. I'm 52, so we called it some. You know, BS would be another word for it. But that person there, and I'm going to bring the comment back up. Interesting username once again. 
this person is now trying to guilt trip the person that said the, the consensus is that the people who are using Ozempic as a weight loss drug and are not diabetic. There's a shortage of medication. I At this time of the recording, I'm not sure if that's still the case, but there is or was a shortage of Ozempic for diabetics because it was being taken up by people who found out this is a great weight loss drug. Now, is this person trained? Has this person tried cutting their carbs, their calories, say try keto, carnivore, which I'm not saying those are long-term nor permanent diet solutions, but they have been effective even with people with diabetes. So I would tell people with diabetes, try the ketogenic diet, try keto, try carnivore, try these diets to see if cutting all the sugar out of your diet will maybe reverse some type of diabetes. There's types that are reversible and types that are not. But in this case, they're saying obesity is a disease. But obesity is also, in most cases, something that's preventable if you diet and exercise and you get proper rest and recovery. Now, if you do all these things for weeks and months, maybe even years, and you have trouble, okay, maybe you need a jump start. But what happens when you get off that? The people now say, they will never, ever get off of this drug. So, uh, you know, like I said, it's your choice. There's the disclaimer again, but you're playing a very dangerous game long-term, in my opinion. All right, here's another one. What's super frustrating is I was working out five to six days a week doing uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and eating a low carb and didn't lose a freaking pound. In fact, I was gaining. I get on meds and continue to do what I was doing and the weight falls off. I showed my doctor my nutrition log, and they started thinking I had Cushing's, but the test came back negative. I have PCOS, I have no idea what that is, and insulin resistance, so GLP-1 are literally a lifesaver for me. But people tell me to eat less and work out more, and it's the same as taking the meds. Okay, they've They've, they've overcome every objection that I would have or anybody else out there. Once again, it's their choice, but I would dare say, because working out and dieting, I say this about other things, you cannot control a lot of what happens in your life, but, and you might not be, be able to get the output to the input that you put into certain things into your life, this YouTube channel, any one of my projects. But the one thing I can guarantee, at least to myself, is I will get a direct one-to-one -one output, working out, dieting or not dieting, resting and recovering or not resting and not recovery. There's all sorts of things, but this is the one true thing or within the space of health, fitness, nutrition. These are the items, the things you do where I believe and still believe to this day, and I will probably till I go to my deathbed, that it is the only thing that you can truly control and get the full results out of your full efforts. If you half-ass it, you're going to get half results. If you think a pill, a knife, or an injection are going to be the fix, then your mindset has already said that working out, dieting, and getting proper rest and recovery will not work. Hey, it's like the old saying, whether you can or you can't, you're absolutely right. So this person's absolutely right. And that's what they're going to do. So let's go to the next comment here, which has a reply. So do you exercise every day and are strict about your eating? I've been on a similar medication and have not lost much weight at all. Person replies, I've been trying to take two days off each week just so my body gets some rest, but I struggle with that. If I do have a technical rest day, I normally do some type of activity like an extra walk or yoga. I eat everything I want just in moderation and I maintain a calorie deficit. Now, what I would tell now that person, I'm going to take them at their word. They are trying, they're doing their best and they may have hit that plateau. But I will throw this in here when they say they're at a caloric deficit and they eat whatever they want in moderation. There's something called macros, proteins, carbs, and fat. There's macronutrients. There's also micronutrients. We aren't going to get into those, but I would dare say, or guess, 
Now, this person might be an exception to the rule, and they might be at that true plateau, that sticking point where they need a little bit of assistance, which I would still weigh, is it worth it to take the temporary assistance and maybe go exactly where you were before? If not, maybe be worse off than you were before taking this drug or this injection. I would say their moderation is eating things that don't have a lot of protein, that aren't really um, kind of the ratio of macros is not as intended for the results. Also, what's their workout? Is their workout just walking in yoga? Are they doing resistance training? Are they doing heavy resistance training? Are they working out according to their age? Are they my age? Or are they 22, 32, 42, 62? These are all factors that you need to take into consideration before you even touch something like Ozempic or anything else. So that's what I would say to that person right there. Maybe look at, really look at what you're eating and how your macros add up or don't add up and all the other stuff, how your workouts, uh, are you doing a modality that might not serve what goal you have in mind? So that's my advice for that. Here's another one. Um, and this person is the other person, the person that the, the Satan person reacted or replied to. It's actually just taking diabetics medication away from them and making it hard to find. My brother is supposed to take this and it's almost always impossible to get. So he's always having to switch to different medications to make up for it. And that person replied, there are over 50 different drugs available for those with type 2. There are less than five for obese people. I would name three that have nothing to do with drugs. Also, obesity turns into type 2. So wanting people to wait until they have diabetes before taking this med makes zero sense. This is once again gaslighting, in my opinion, because, bring the comment back up, because this is uh, saying obesity is a disease. I mean, that's, that's up to people out there. But there's less than five. Now, here's what I would ask. Do you work out? Do you have a good nutrition plan? Do you get proper rest and recovery? If those three things are not part of the five, that you're mentioning, because those three, in my opinion, are much more important than whatever five drugs you're talking about. And trying to guilt diabetic patients into saying, well, I don't, you know, I'd rather have somebody else have it than me. Now, like I said before, people who are diabetic in certain situations can reverse that or limit what you need to do as far as shots. But I know people that have reversed it going on the keto diet. Is that a 100% guaranteed result? No, I don't think so. And I don't know, but I do know people, more people that have benefited from cutting all the sugar, especially processed, processed sugar out of their diet. And I've done that. The keto diet is basically cutting all the sugar out, having healthy fats, having a moderate amount, a moderate amount of protein. People have done the carnivore diet, which is very limiting and, uh, you know, not something that people, most people can stay on long term. So, but it takes a lot of discipline, but saying, I'm going to take this drug or that drug or these five drugs, or you diabetics go there, take that because I'm obese. I deserve, you know, to prioritize me and other obese people to do that. So it's up to you. It, it's up to you. Like I said, here's the disclaimer. Once again, it's your choice. And this right here. I don't know if they solved the shortage issue at the time of this recording, but man, people are like, I, I said it to my wife this morning, people are going to fight like this and be divided and split and want to jump over each other or trample each other for Ozempic. Imagine if there was actual, I go back to the toilet paper massacre of 2020, uh, where people were trying to each other over toilet paper or delete each other, or unalive each other, whatever the word is, that we're not allowed to use that word. But people were, were going nuts over toilet paper. People were going nuts over this. Imagine if you, if there was a food shortage, or hey, I, they probably want the Ozempic before the food or the water, but it's just crazy times. Here's the last comment. I worked in a chemi as a chemist or in a chemist lab for six months, and when I say we had no insulin, 
to give diabetics just effing go to the gym. So that's what I'm going to leave that with because I really do believe a lot of times people aren't looking at working out, nutrition, proper rest and recovery. Some people get lots of rest, but they aren't recovering from a workout. They're just resting and taking their shot, their pill, waiting for the bypass, waiting for Dr. No to tell them they're doing great. Uh, if you watch My 600-Pound Life, it's the same excuses as these people I think are giving um maybe these people and these people probably even aren't even nearly as obese as the people in that reality show so but the excuses are all the same in my opinion uh let me know what you think in the comments this video is a little bit different but I want to speak on things that are in my mind and, and and in my heart and this is the kind of stuff I hope people out there that are watching this video su subscribe to this channel or even just happen to find it, uh, get the motivation and the encouragement that if I can do it, you can do it. I just recovered from a spine infection. I'm still recovering after a year of being cleared uh, for workouts. I'm not back to where I want to be. I'm not happy with the way I look. I'm not happy w with where I am in my health, wellness, fitness, nor nutrition, especially. I love to eat food. I'm Italian. I'm not happy, but I'm working at it. I'm working at it, and I'm not going to lean on a drug, a pill, a shot, nor a weight loss surgery, nor implants or any of that other stuff that people get, that calf implants and all this goofy stuff. Not going to do it. I want to be as real as I can with each and every one of you out there. Please, please, please just give your best effort. Just try to work out. Try to diet. Try to get proper rest and recovery. Do not lean on garbage like this. There is a place for it and a time for it, but until you hit that plateau and sticking point, just work hard and you'll get results. Like I said, leave a comment below. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching this video. God bless each and every one of you. Have a great day.